Welcome to this station where we're going to be exploring some algebra tiles to support conceptual understanding, to reduce that stress level, to actively engage our students and create this positive learning culture that we've been talking about for these evidence-based practices. We want to pre create that best environment for all students. So we're going to learn a little bit about how to use algebra tiles and then we're going to take some time to do some make and take because even though you can purchase some algebra tiles through different vendors, you also can make them by simply using cardstock, colored cardstock, some um, glue and uh, scissors, and then we're, we're good to go for our own classroom. I would also invest in some little baggies and a little sandwich baggies to hold them so that each student can actually have their own set. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Let's take the, let's begin by understanding why algebra tiles um, are so important in helping build this positive, active, engaged um, learning climate. So hands to mine have a lot of different manipulatives you can purchase as well as the supports that go through videos on how to use them in your classroom. And you'll have those links again in the resource guide. We also want to take some time just to understand that there are some additional resources and Project STARE, Dr. Sarah Powell um, is, um, is instrumental in creating this environment for teachers to learn about manipulatives and the power of manipulatives in this particular one. We're just going to watch a snippet of it. It's from Project Stairs, uh, Project Stare, and it's about, uh, again, using the algebra tiles. Now, keep in mind that she'll refer to zero pairs, and if you're not familiar with zero pairs, then hop over to, I don't know which way direction it'll be, but hop over to the, the station that is on zero pairs, and you'll learn a little bit about zero pairs, and maybe be able to create your own set of zero pairs for students to use, or your own manipulatives. Here we go. So let's take a listen again. Now, I've written both of those problems here on this sticky note. You might write them on a sticky note just like me, or you could write them on the whiteboard or on your board or whatever, whatever tool you want to use. But it is always important that students actually see the abstract representation of the problem. Now, we're going to use the algebra tiles to uh, solve these equations. The algebra tiles are a pretty neat tool. Um, here, I can use these rods to represent the variable. Here, they would be used to, X, to represent x. And I have a positive side and a negative side. I can flip them over to easily show uh, either a positive x or negative x. Then I have these units. Notice that there's kind of a light brown side and a red side. These are going to represent my constant. So this is a positive one, and this would represent a negative one. So let's go ahead and get this problem set up. I have two sets of x, and those x are positive. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in two rods just like this. And to that, we are adding 4, and that 4 is positive. So I'll go ahead and bring in 4 units just like that. So I can see I have 2x plus 4. Now on that side of the equal sign, we have 6. And I add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? So if I was walking around the classroom and kids were doing this with you, I could literally cover the problem up and I could say, oh yes, you have this set up, 2x plus 4 equals 6. It's very good visual to make sure that students have the problem set up correctly. Now we're going to isolate the variable. So I'm going to leave this x here, and I want to remove this constant. And we can do that by using zero pairs. I want to create four zero pairs over here so that this side of the equal sign 
will equal zero in terms of my constant. So I'll bring in four negative uh, units to make that happen. But whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you also have to do to the other. So I'll also bring in negative four on that side of the equal sign. Now I'm going to make my zero pairs and remove them from my workspace. And I don't have any more zero pairs on this side of the equal sign, but I want to see if I have some on that side of the equal sign. And we do. I'll go ahead and remove those. So now I have 2x equals 2. I want to figure out the value of a single x. So I'm going to distribute my constant um, among the x's. So I can see that each x has a value of positive 1. So that was solving 2x plus 4 equals 6. Let's solve this next problem. 7 equals 3x plus 1. Now the reason why we want to just take some time just to point this out, we're not going to go through the entire video, but it's important that students see that the x variable can be on the left side or the right side. So making sure that we're intentional on giving the examples that they may see at any given space, you know, throughout the year. Now that we've seen the video, let's take some time to actually um, practice with them. So I actually do have a set of algebra tiles there that are from the hands to mine. And so you can use those to um, demonstrate how to use the algebra tiles and how to solve them. There's going to be the algebra tiles sitting on the station as well as a mat with the equal sign on it. That's an important piece. Sometimes it's drawn as a line, sometimes it's drawn as an equal sign. Either way, but it is important that they that students see the connection between the ver the uh, manipulatives as well as the abstract algebraic equation. We need to make sure that we're intentional on seeing those connections. So go ahead, pause the video. So now we get to the cutting and the uh, gluing. This is where we're going to start with our make and take. So you're going to take the, and, and you're going to glue a red cardstock paper to the back of the green cardstock paper and make it nice and uh, tight. And then you're going to then be able to create the double side, double sided for the X variables. You'll cut those into nice little rectangles. You can measure them if you'd like, or you can use, I like to, to use the paper cut. You're going to repeat that same process, but now you're going to do it with the yellow and the red. I know in the video she said it's kind of like a brownish color. It's really more like a yellowish yellow color. So I like the yellow and the red colors to do the, um, to create the constants. And then you can repeat that again. If you want the X squares, you're going to do the red and the blue. So then just stick it all in Ziploc bag and then you have sets of them. So let's start. Good luck and thanks again for being part of this station.